Well, the time everyone's been waiting for is finally here. Back when Alder Lake first launched, the desktop processors were interesting, but it was obvious that this new architecture was really going to help laptops. In this case, the efficient cores should give longer battery life and P cores should be able to push performance. I mean, that's what hybrid designs are built for in the first place. Plus, it's an approach that might give AMD some trouble in the short term, even though they've announced new laptop processors. So what's coming from Intel? Well, let's jump right into it. But first of all, I do want to remind you that if you want to know more about the Alder Lake architecture, um, you can click right over here because it'll actually help you set the stage for everything that I'm talking about in this video. Also, uh, if you have any questions about this, we'll be hanging out in the comments section below for a few days. So get those keyboards going. <laughs> Anyways, the Alder Lake laptop lineup will include three different series. There's the usual H series, which will end up in the higher end laptops for gamers and creators, and the U series for ultra efficiency portable ultrabooks. What's new this time around is a middle segment with the P series for thin and light high performance laptops. It kind of acts like a bridge between thicker boys packing high wattage H chips and ultra thin U series laptops. And what does that mean? Well, think of this as going into laptops like the Legion Slim 7, the Tough F series and MSI's Creator Z series instead of detuned H series processors. Because last year, Intel tried the same thing by pumping more power into their low wattage Tiger Lake U series CPUs. And that pretty much failed because they couldn't really compete with Ryzen CPUs with similar prices. You can actually check out the Acer Triton 300SC and the Tough F15 reviews if you want any proof, because that wasn't really pretty. This time, Intel's approaching things the right way, and hopefully, it'll be a lot better. But don't think that all of the Alder Lake desktop features are coming over to the laptop side. Every CPU architecture from AMD's Ryzen to this one gets some cuts to reduce power consumption and increase efficiency. So what's the changes this time around? Let's take a look at those after a quick word from today's video sponsor. The NZXT Capsule Microphone. Get the best airflow for your vocal experience with a modular pop-out chamber to simplify installation on and off the bass. Control the gain for best volume RPM in a package that looks this good with USB-C and headphone input I.O. with a true unbox plug and play solution for your loud thoughts to shine. The capsule sounds pretty neutral as you can hear, plus it's a good place to start if you plan to overclock with EQ later. Check out the NZXT Capsule black or white down below. Okay, so about the changes. Uh, even though there's support for DDR4 and DDR5, PCI Gen 5 gets chopped off here. And that makes sense, I guess, because components that would actually benefit from it won't be around until 2023 at earliest, well, at least on the laptop side. So there's really no reason to have it here in the first place. But on the flip side of that, the number of graphics lanes has actually increased from four on Tiger Lake to eight on Alder Lake. I should also mention that Intel can still enable Gen 5 support sometime down the line if the need arises, but for now, they're just sticking to Gen 4. Other than that, you get the usual Thunderbolt 4 and Wi-Fi 6C, but otherwise, it actually doesn't really matter since it's totally up to laptop manufacturers to enable or disable them. And if 2021 was any indication, most of the ports were disabled anyways. So the H series lineup itself looks something like this, and you'll notice three things right away. First of all, most of the new processors have more E cores than P cores, since the focus here is to balance battery life with performance. Also, the i9 and i7s can chug down up to 115 watts if the laptop cooling solution allows for it. The third one, and this is going to be a big one for content creators who use GPU compute workloads, it's basically Intel moving to 96 execution units for their integrated graphics. Because remember, Tiger Lake H topped out around 32. The higher end CPUs all get the same design too with six performance cores offering 12 threads alongside eight efficient cores uh, with the only real difference being clock speeds. Then of course, there's the i5s with fewer cores, less threads, lower clock speeds, less graphics execution units, and a slightly cut down max power of 95 watts. But it still looks like some of these could run circles around the i7s in today's laptops. And that's a really, really good thing. Now, obviously, Intel showed off some of their usual performance benchmarks and yeah take these with a few grains of salt guys but still from everything we've seen on desktop Alder Lake does take a pretty big leap forwards versus previous generation and you got to remember on the laptop side we're talking about Tiger Lake which is already a really really good option for gaming meanwhile if you compare it to the 5900HX with a similar RTX 3080 running at 165 watts and the 12900HK looks pretty dominant but there are a few things you need to take into account here. 
The first thing I want to talk about is CPU power, since that's determined by the manufacturer. And we've actually tested both systems being mentioned here. When running games, both the AMD-based Legion 7 and Intel-based G76 Raider run their CPUs around 45 watts in the highest power mode. I mean, sure, with an all-core load, the MSI will pump its CPU to over 95 watts, while the Legion's 5900HX only hits 80 watts, but in gaming, they're pretty much even. So that means this chart is about as apples to apples as it gets until we can actually test out these claims. But another thing you need to remember is that the 5900HX is going to be replaced this year. So comparisons against AMD's newest laptop CPUs can't really happen until a bit later. But let's push aside Intel's gaming claims against AMD just for a second, since they've got bigger problems in the professional laptop market. And that's Apple's M1 Max and M1 Pro chips, guys. I mean, in my MacBook Pro video, I mentioned that it's a great competitor against some of the best Windows laptops around. And based on Intel's benchmarks, Alder Lake should compete pretty well, at least right now. Just remember, uh, there's still a bunch of programs that aren't optimized for M1 yet, so this might change in the future. You should also take into account that AMD is going to struggle in these benchmarks since many actually leverage Intel's integrated graphics. The other two benchmarks Intel provided also play to their strengths. First of all, the Blender Car benchmark is a short one, which benefits their short boost algorithms, while Crossmark is just another synthetic benchmark that has very, very little real-world significance. Now, moving down to the P series, and I've really got to say, there's going to be a lot of overlap with the 8 series processors uh, when they're set to a lower power envelope. The main problem I see here uh, are their names because it's just so similar to higher-end CPUs. So I'm sure that's going to create a lot of customer confusion. Just make sure you pay close attention to that last letter, since these processors have the same number of e-cores, but their p-core counts can be a lot less. For example, while the 12600H has six p-cores, the 12600P has just four. But I have to hand it to Intel. I mean, these names are still a lot less confusing compared to the alphabet soup that they had a few years ago. So. Good job, I guess. Now, when it comes to the ultra-efficient U-series, it's great to see Intel moving away from the quad-core architecture, but I really have to wonder how just two P-cores would hold up in everyday workloads. But since they're backstopped by up to eight efficient cores, man, I think this is going to be an interesting lineup for thin and light laptops. Honestly, out of all these processors, I'm probably more excited about these. Well, I guess that pretty much wraps things up, guys. And... I've got to say, it looks like Alder Lake can really cause some issues for AMD in the laptop market. Because, you know, even though the Ryzen lineup is coming, and I'm sure it's going to be impressive, we can't forget that it's still based off Zen 3, since Zen 4 isn't ready yet. And it isn't just about performance either. It's just no secret that AMD has had some major challenges meeting demand for their laptop processors. I mean, a year after the announcement, it's still almost impossible to find a Zen 3-based 5000U series laptops. I just don't see that situation changing in 2022, but Intel's already promising plenty of availability starting next month. Either way, as I keep repeating every single year, competition is a great thing. And with these new processors, we should see a heck of a lot more in the laptop market. And I guess that's good for everyone. So on that note, Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, definitely let us know in the comments down below. We will definitely include them in when we start reviewing these new laptops with 12 gen CPUs. Honestly, I'm excited to see what AMD has on the forefront. It's gonna be quite nice. But yeah, that's it for me, guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.